Okay, I'm going to explain how this translates specifically to you because people have said, hey, you're talking at 30,000 feet, and yeah, that's great, we want to save the world. What does that mean to me? Okay, here it is. So every year you pay state income tax and you pay federal income tax. Your federal income tax pays for military, social security, border, etc. And then there's $120 billion. I said $120 billion left over that doesn't go to any services that Californians ever get. It goes to grants from the federal government to 35 states to pay for roads, bridges, schools, dams, seaports, airports, and levees. Here's the kicker. Federal government rates all of this infrastructure every year. Tours the nation, rates everything every single year. California is the worst in every single form of infrastructure in all of America and has been for decades. However, for 30 years, you have continued to pay for 35 other states to have every single one of these forms of infrastructure better than you. Feds say you're worst, but give me that money so you're going to make sure these other people are doing better than you. This has gone on for 30 years. I'm not exaggerating. This has already been brought up. We just don't talk about it. $120 billion is equivalent to one state budget. One state budget is equivalent to every one state income tax combined. So what I'm telling you is that you waste your state income tax. You are paying state income tax and getting nothing. You're paying extra federal income tax for other people to do and continue to stay better than you. They're not worse than you. They've been better than you, and you're keeping them there, and this has gone for three decades. Guess what's going to happen in another 30 years? Someone's going to be here, and they're going to be going to your grandkids, hey, did you know that you have been milked for 30 years and you didn't do anything about it? Yeah. It's gone on for 30 years. Why won't it go on another 10, another 20, another 30? It's very possible. But it gets even better, because although you're wasting $120 billion for people who don't need it, the services that you are paying for, well, you don't exactly get those either. So border security. You pay for border security. Every government on the entire earth deals with protecting their borders, but not in California. Feds don't really come up with border security agents. So the state has to dip into existing state funds to provide more enforcements at the border. So you pay federal income taxes for this service. It does not happen. Then your state resources are dipped into a second time to pay for it. That's double tax. But it gets better. Every time that there's fire season, Fires go up, homes are burned, sometimes people die. Well, we don't even ask the feds for help anymore. Schwarzenegger, when he was governor, started this, and basically it worked out that if there's a national emergency, and it is a called a national, natural emergency, the feds don't come. Instead, your state taxes are dipped to, again, to pay for helicopters in other states that we have the resources that we need to fight the fires. So you pay for federal income tax, for national emergencies, you don't get it, and then you pay again. That's another double tax. Here's the third one, national security. Now, this is something that every country in the world does, except for America. Did you know that in the last five years after 9-11, five years, right after 9-11, you never got your 9-11 security money? Homeland Security Director Michael Chertoff, when he retired, said that California was the most vulnerable spot in all of America for terrorist attack because of our seaports and airports. Yet, you didn't get your money to protect the most vulnerable spot in all of America for half a decade. Do you know who did protect you? You. Truckers had to pay an extra $30 tax on every container coming out of seaports and airports, which meant the cost of local goods went up because they over here that's passed on to you. So you pay a double tax to get the nuclear radiation scanners at the seaport to keep you from being blown up by terrorists. You'd think the feds would do that. You'd think they do it after 9-11 when it's a national security issue, but no, it didn't happen. You still pay. You still pay for these services, you don't get them, and you pay that $120 billion and during the recession. So don't complain if you don't get your service. You make sure you cough up that money in like you've done for the last 30 years. But it gets even better. Because California is the worst hit state in all of America in this recession. Schwarzenegger is a Republican. 
George W. Bush was president when he was governor, also a Republican. Schwarzenegger went to him and said, hey, I went to Asia. I worked out these trade deals. I got 150,000 blue collar trade jobs ready to go right now. Will you please sign the paperwork? I already worked everything out. Just sign it. Bush sat up for five years. And unfortunately, the current president has also sat on these trade deals for five years. Yes, during the middle of this recession, as much as he says that he cares, and we're the worst in state in all of America, he had the chance to create $150,000, 150,000 blue collar jobs, chose not to do it for five years. Schwarzenegger spoke out against Bush, he spoke out against Obama. Because the federal government is not concerned about California issues, especially when it comes to international trade. So, when there are opportunities for you to make more money and improve your economy, you are blocked. So let's review. You're robbed one state budget. You pay 200% tax for essential services that every nation on the planet gets. You're stopped when you try to improve yourself. Why are you doing this? You've done this for 30 years. Why? What are you getting out of this? If you didn't do this, you could cut your taxes in half. And you could do it with no cuts to services. That's what I'm offering. And you could put that money into your schools, and you could make your state a place that is a golden state. Because we've been sliding. I know you all know this. We've been sliding for the last 10, 20 years. It's time to fix it. We already have the resources to do it. They are literally stolen from you. I'll turn it over to questions. Okay, is there any questions? <laughs> any questions at all? Uh, yes, sir, and then, and then you in the back. How do you find out about the Rigi Peace Center? I'm curious. I looked up, and this is going somewhere, I looked up every single political type of organization in all of California and emailed them all. I've spoken at multiple Libertarian Party chapters. I have a booking at a Republican Party chapter, but I also just finished a speech at a union. And I have two more peace centers, and I have two more green parties. <clears throat> When's the last time you've ever heard of an idea that appealed to all political ideologies? It's this one. You're the man, please. Assuming that uh, you know, your figures are correct, and it actually, uh, it's not hard for me to believe that yeah. you know, what you're saying is true. Uh, what are the practicality of the state seeking from the Thank you for asking that question. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so here, let me just say a couple things. Number one, I am not talking about secession. You've heard about these petitions in other states and uh, we want to peacefully secede. That's racist. They're just upset that the president's there. I have been working on this idea for six years when George W. Bush was president, and it deals with economics that go back 30 years. This has absolutely nothing to do with the current president, and it has absolutely nothing to do with secession. What I'm talking about is subnational sovereignty. That's called subnational sovereignty. Scotland, Scotland, you know, Braveheart, and et cetera. In the last five years, these five years, Scotland has gone from a colony of England where all of the decisions were made in London by British people and not Scottish people, although they had some representation, to where Scotland is almost completely independent. Scotland has the military and the dollar. And I'll repeat that. The military and the dollar and all existing business contracts stay intact, but they got to have power over immigration, banking, education, border security, international relations. They've done this in the last five years. They did it through a bunch of talking, and they did it through a bunch of votes. They talk for a year, take a vote, and one year that passed, they do another one. After five years, they went almost completely independent. Now, here's the thing. The worst thing that happened was harsh language. The Prime Minister of England said, this will destroy England. Well, that was five years ago. England's still there. <laughs> Marriage rates between Scottish people and English people have gone up, even though their economies have technically legally become apart. Business contracts between England and Scotland have gone up, even though their economies have technically pulled apart. And the Queen of England gave a commendation for Scottish soldiers for their bravery in Afghanistan in the last two years, and that is post-subnational sovereignty. Plus, the economic system of Stalin has become more stable and they become richer. But 
Subnational sovereignty doesn't just apply to Scotland. It is found by 25 other nations around the planet today who are all democracies, all stable economies, and all have good relations with their existing partner. Plus, America has already done forms of subnational sovereignty with previous governments in its history. While it's a radical concept, it's there, it's well established, it's recognized. Plus, British legal scholars have already recognized that California has a case for pursuing this, and the Russian ambassador specifically said that he would take the case to the UN if California ever approached it. So there's already people talking about it, it's already documented, and it exists. And I'm saying, not that we would do this, but that we would look at it. You know, I've given this speech three cities. Five percent of the people are aware of how badly they've been known for the last 30 years. And most people don't know that they're doubly taxed, they waste money, and they are prevented from getting themselves out of the recession. Let's at least have that conversation. Uh, next question. Um, you said it has to be done from the ground up, grassroots movement. Absolutely. And how do you see it? Is it through an initiative, or how, how would this come about? What's, what's the process? The key thing that has to happen is what I call social explosion, where people are aware. So I was told when I first got this book published, Mark, great idea, that's too radical, it's not going to go anywhere. Well, it's been 30 cities and four think tanks and book reviews later. Californians are interested in this. They just don't know about it. Every single person that I tell, hey, did you know you're missing out $120 billion you didn't have to pay and it goes to welfare for other 35 states who already have it better than you for 30 years? Most people say, no, I've never heard of that. When we get to where half of the population is aware that they've been milked and stopped from improving themselves and robbed for three decades, well, this political climate is totally new. Because right now we're dealing with a situation where only 5% now. Most people don't know. So yeah, the federal government can continue to do this going on and on because most people are ignorant. We get 50% of the people aware. This becomes totally different. The initiative is a movement, a vehicle, in order to get to that goal. The initiative would direct the legislature to seriously look at this plan and come up with what's called a blue ribbon panel, which is a form for our government findings of report and they would interview foreign and domestic legal scholars on this, basically take it seriously. But that's just a way to get the idea out there that people take this seriously and Californians, when they find out how much they're losing and what they're being stopped from being, are interested in pursuing other options. That's basically how we do it. Yes, sir? I'm, I'm not going to ask this quite right, but how many of you are there? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're making a presentation to these these number of places. I'm wondering how many other people are making this presentation. To um, right now, it's just me making the presentations. I'm going to make a series of videos so that there'll be some sort of standardized speeches, and we'll move from there. Um, I would say that there are about five people working on the incorporation papers. Um, there's about five people who do general research that I've met, and then. If you added up all 30 cities where I've been invited back at each city, and everybody who heard the speech, that's about 30 people at each spot, so 30 times 30. Plus, everybody who's read the LA Daily News article, and seen the press release, and the California Alley book review. So maybe that's a couple thousand people. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, wouldn't congressional action have to be involved, and you're dealing already with a Senate that we have two out of a hundred, you know, and you have 35 states that are benefiting from the fat and cow us. So how are we going to, how are you going to get the rest of the uh, Congress to go along with this? 